Sony quickly anonymously. Chad, you picture an empty room with yourself at the center. I don't know. Do you know what you must do? I don't. But I do. And I will teach you time to come out of the basement. Hello Internet, welcome to Film Theory, the show that encourages you to cry out, cry out, cry out. And if the choppy black and white animations haven't clued you in yet, yep, we're in that part of YouTube again. That shadowy corner where anything goes, where you'll see things that burn themselves into your mind. That corner that you probably shouldn't be watching at 3 a.m., but you're gonna try to anyway to see if you're brave enough to last. And then you're gonna pass it on to your friends as a humble brag saying, Look, I watched this. Can you? The horror in question today is a small indie channel that I've had my eye on for a while now called underscore Boisvert, or as I believe it's actually pronounced, Boisvert. When I see the underscore at the beginning, it always makes me think that there needs to be a dramatic pause there, like <gasps> Boisvert. Anyway, Boisvert is French and literally translates to green wood, which I don't think has anything to do with the twisted images that you're about to be seeing in its videos. The phrase is also used in a French figure of speech, un volet de Boisvert, which means a barrage of criticism. Likely more why it was chosen for the series and not the whole green wood thing. Regardless, I'd like to take this opportunity to offer a formal apology to the entirety of the French language for this video. Anyway, Boisvert is a peculiar little channel with imagery and sound design that's equal parts creative, creepy, and cryptic. The videos are almost avant-garde in their use of visuals, combining a lot of different animation and filmmaking techniques into something that's truly uncanny and often terrifying. Seriously, from the very first video, we jump from traditional sequentially drawn animation to skin-crawling live action with heavy filters and rotoscoped visuals. <laughs> And that's just what's on the surface of the very first video. Look a little deeper and you start finding allusions to biblical stories, horrifying monsters, and a heightened, almost academic language. 1,000 decisions made in the name of a desiccated existence. Look up from here and watch and tell me when you will grant forgiveness to the one most lacking. There's also a lot of imagery in there of floating hands trying to give us the tickles. So that's fun. If you can manage to brave your way through its uploads, it's clear that there's a story here, but the timeline of events is completely out of order. There are also elements of an ARG here, like Morse code and QR codes that are linking to unlisted videos. And you know me, when I see an analog horror series with ARG elements, can't help but get to the bottom of it. There is clearly a deeper story hidden in this channel just under the surface, and what I found at the end of the mystery was not at all what I would have expected. Boisvert is simultaneously one of the darkest and twisted explorations into human emotion that I've seen. And yet, once you understand what you're watching, it hits hard. It is real. It connects in a way that most other media doesn't. And to top it all off, it's uplifting. Don't let this fool you, friends. This story has itself a happy ending. That said, before it gets there, Boisvert is heavy, friends. Consider this your content warning. Today, we're braving our way through topics like depression, anxiety, isolation, and self-harm. But I promise you, it all comes out good in the end. So, what is the creator of Boisvert trying to say through all the unsettling whispers? Let us begin. From the very first video, Take Care, it's clear that we're diving into a plot that has a lot to say. Here we meet our main character, an artist. I'm gonna call him Antlers Guy because none of the characters in the series appear to have official names. Antlers Guy counts the small victories where he can, including waking up at a reasonable hour, consistently exercising, ignoring the noises downstairs. Yeah, you can kind of see where this one might be headed. Before too long, Antlers Guy is drawn to the noises, heading down into the basement. And it's there that we meet our main monster, Room, a shadowy figure with a disturbing triangular head. Suddenly, in a jarring twist, the art style shifts to live footage with the entity charging at the camera, whispering a series of pointed questions. It is creepy 
creepy stuff. But the questions that Room asks us give us our first clue as to what the series is about. Based on the video's upload date, May 2020, and the very first words that we see on screen, these are troubling times, my friend, we know that Boisvert is exploring the feelings of isolation that were brought upon by the COVID lockdowns. Basically, this thing is like Bo Burnham's Inside without the musical numbers. And Instagram jokes. Antler's guy is clearly having difficulty adjusting to the isolation, and this triangular-headed figure in the basement represents the depression that lurks within the depths of his mind. But this isn't the first time that he's had to deal with room or the depression that he represents. In a later video, entitled Entirely Beloved, we hear that Antler's guy has always struggled with bridging the chasm and drawing near without reprisal, aka connecting with other people. And though he's actively tried to seek out relationships, he's never been able to find them. But it is to no avail. We also see this play out in another video, They Don't Know. Here, Antler's guy is consumed by the dark figure while attending a party before the lockdowns happen. Clearly, no one understands his distress. He begins to flail around wildly and no one responds to it. Interestingly, this video is also based on the They Don't Know meme, which also had an earlier incarnation with the caption, I wish I was at home. A phrase that makes me want to say, be careful what you wish for, friends. But that was before. Now that Antler's guy has been quarantining at home, the depressive thoughts are seeping into every other other part of his life, most obviously his work. We see that same shadowy creature appearing as a drawing while Antler Guy tries to remain productive in lockdown. And that's not the only moment it happens. While scrolling through the video frame by frame, if you pause it at the perfect moment, you'll see Room peeking in at Antler's Guy through the window. This whole idea of your house, your room, a once safe place now becoming an oppressive prison is a major through line for Boisvert's thematic narrative. In a later video, Prelude Angel's Warning, there's a series of dots and dashes down in the description. Seasoned air Jeers will immediately recognize this as Morse code. And when you run it through a translator, it asks, when does a home become a complex? That phrase is also included in a secret message in the same video, hidden in the closed captions during some heavy breathing. Either way, that question, when does a home become a complex, has a double meaning for the series, both as a physical prison complex, as well as a psychological mental health complex. Antler's guy clearly feels trapped not only in his home, but within the confines of his own mind. But when the prison finally opens its doors, when the world becomes safer and he's able to get out again, things just get worse. The damage has already been done. Antler's guy is still terrified of going outside, but now he has the added layers of guilt and otherness to contend with as the world moves on without him. We see this in the video Burning.mp4. Released in March of 2021, Burning states that an entire year has passed since the world was shut down and our protagonist is not doing well. His expression is now permanently veiled in shadow. Instead of waking up encouraged, he views his life as just a series of endless cycles that continue to repeat. He lives paralyzed in the basement, watching the rest of society through the window. Now, all he can do is stare at a blank sheet of paper and bash his head into the desk until he's fully consumed by his inner darkness. It's cool time. You're gaming us for you. Brain, your strength in the base. Yeah. Thankfully, Antler's guy isn't completely without hope. Next upload, Continue dramatizes his internal battle as a video game showdown between two new figures, Skullface and Dogface. Again, because they don't have official names, we're just gonna call these characters Pessimism and Optimism, respectively. And let me tell you, this video's got pretty much everything you'd want in a good showdown. A hero, a villain, a music track that absolutely slaps. Pessimism looms large over a game over screen, and Antler's guy has to contemplate quitting. Notice that the default option on the screen is actually quit. However, even when Antler's guy chooses to continue, pessimism replaces the option for a split second as not a chance, encapsulating the hopelessness that's consumed Antler's guy. We actually see literal manifestations of those thoughts scrolling by in the text above and below pessimism. It goes pretty fast, but if you pause on certain frames, you can see phrases like, I've always deluded myself. I will end you today and every subsequent day. You will have no hope. I suspect that these are his inner monologue, the negative things that he's telling himself as he spirals further and further downward. Thankfully, optimism appears, representing an option to continue, battling and ultimately stabbing pessimism. Antler's guy will continue for another day. In its final moment, pessimism even sprouts dog ears, representing how pessimism can be reshaped into optimism if you just give it the chance. Interestingly, I believe that optimism in the story is represented by a dog-faced creature, because there was a massive spike in pedagogy 
adoption during the pandemic, with one in five American households adopting either a cat or a dog. For many, these furry companions served as a ray of sunshine that brought much needed positivity and optimism to people at the height of COVID's nasty strain of isolation. In a later video, we do see a dog avatar representing optimism, so it does seem to track. But as anyone struggling with depression knows, it's not about winning just one battle. This isn't the sort of diagnosis where you have a single moment and suddenly you've conquered depression. Handling depression is a process that takes time. And we see that happening in the next series of uploads, The Complex and Entirely Beloved. Pessimism returns in a new, much darker form called The Complex. Complex is an aberration, yet you have shredded a hole within yourself that only it may fill. The Complex has driven Antler's guy to push everyone away, and in so doing, he's trapped him in a new prison, one entirely self-made, forcing him to sit alone in silence with all these dark thoughts, just spiraling. Because he feels as if he's missing something, Antler's guy draws even further in from everyone around him. On a community post from the channel, we actually see this reiterated. It says, something is missing, with a hex code that leads to this image of a chair, and a QR code leading to Antler's guy sitting on it, alone forever in a dark room. All of this causes Antler's guy to be entirely consumed consumed by his dark room persona, sent not just to the basement, but into a deep well in the basement, lower than low, the literal abyss of despair. It's there that he comes to a disturbing conclusion. Though he always wanted genuine connections with other people, he simply couldn't bring himself to take that chance because he was afraid. He explains, And when you come near, you will see in my eyes. But it's not just that he's afraid of other people, he's afraid of not being loved. I say this because the video ends on the French word for fear, peur. But the closed caption subtitles actually replace the word fear with love. In fact, the complex actually spells it out for us. For a brief moment in the video consequences, a QR code appears in the corner. And once this thing's scanned, it takes you to a secret unlisted video. Here, the complex explains that Love is not a guarantee in anyone's life. Anyone unfortunate enough could go through life without ever feeling loved. Love. It would be an entirely alien concept to them. Even when consumed by the room entity, Antler's guy still wants to feel the warmth of love, and his depression has left him so emotionally drained that even the concept of love feels foreign to him. All of this becomes too much for Antler's guy. In the final shot of Entirely Beloved, Room looks up, and we see that his mask, the only thing that allowed him to face the world, is shattered. We see the fallout of this throughout the rest of the video consequences. The once calm and clean space that Antler's guy lived in is now wild and chaotic. The home has become a true reflection of the distress that he feels within. And with this, we arrive at the climax of the story arc, Zoning Ordinance. Even the title's a hint at what we're about to see. Zoning ordinances dictate how a specific property is meant to be used, and since the state of Antler's guy's dwelling space represents his mental state, this video will decide which mindset will govern him. Will he give in to his dark thoughts, or will he defeat them and move forward? Antler's guy is consumed by his shadow form, sitting at the bottom of a deep pit in the basement while complex looms over him. That's when the injured optimism arrives bloodied, but not beaten. In fact, it literally drags the corpse of pessimism with him as it arrives at the pit. Immediately, the complex lashes out and attacks optimism, trying to drown out its positive intentions. This then starts another battle and another killer beat. During the struggle, Pessimism's corpse is knocked into the pit, and Antler's guy begins to devour it, symbolic of how in his depressive state, he's literally feeding on negative thoughts. And during this epic struggle of positivity versus negativity, optimism against pessimism, hope versus depression, Antler's guy is wounded as a knife falls into the pit and strikes him. I think this is Boisvert's way of portraying the topic of self-harm, but in this moment, he encounters the angel, which, uh, not really the thing that I want to see while I'm approaching the pearly gates, gotta say. Then again, some angels in the Bible are described described as interlocking golden wheels covered in eyeballs, so, you know, maybe this thing is more accurate than I'd care to admit. Regardless, the angel comforts Antler's guy, asking him to recenter his thoughts on himself, picturing himself as the center of an empty room. It encourages him to cry out so that no one can ignore him, telling Antler's guy that it's okay to ask for help. Antler's guy reaches out to the angel, pulling off its face, and then putting it on himself Majora's Mask style. But I don't suspect that this is a mask hiding us from other people. Instead, I think it's representative of Antler's guy putting on a new, brave face so he can confront his own depression and enter the world that scared him for almost his entire life. The moment he grabs the mask, the closed captions read, I've wanted to know you in this way for so long. Antler's guy has found something that he can connect with and open up to. Back in the pit, hands erupt out of Antler's guy and lift him out of the pit, grabbing the complex and ripping it to shreds. The very last thing that we see in the video is Antler's guy, still consumed by the depressing room entity, disappearing and leaving behind only the outline of his 
the silhouette. Morse code hidden in the closed caption at this point tells us goodbye and hello. And the video's description reads, an ending, a continuation, a beginning. Despite Antler's guy saying goodbye to the complex, brought on by a lifetime of fear and incited by the home lockdowns, the darkness inside of him still lives on in a small way. The depression still follows him, it always will, but we're now saying hello to a new start, a new beginning, a chance to coexist with the darkness, to understand it, and most importantly, to handle it in a healthy way. And with that, we see the closing of this chapter of Boisvert's story, something that I'm gonna call the complex arc, with our central character reasserting his voice and taking steps to pull himself out of his literal pit of despair. Now, to be honest, there's more to Boisvert's story. Really, there is, considering the channel's still actively uploading, so it's likely that I'll probably revisit the channel at some point down the road if you liked it. But for now, I just honestly appreciate how well this story's told. For as horrific as the visuals get, the message is actually real and hopeful. When you live with clinical depression or anxiety, you simply don't defeat it like you see in so much media. It doesn't just go away vanquished. Instead, you have to learn to live alongside it in a way that allows you to continue moving forward. And sometimes you're gonna fail. Sometimes you're gonna backslide into another depressive episode. And that's okay. No one is gonna be at their best every single day. And it's okay to reach out and ask for help when that sort of thing happens. And that's gonna be true for a creepy looking YouTube protagonist or for you watching at home dealing with the hard times for yourself. As they say at the end of Zoning Ordinance, cry out. Cry out. Cry out. And I bet that you'll find an audience of people willing to listen, able to relate, and eager to help. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cuts.